Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm very excited to talk to you guys about biofuel. I know that does not sound like a very interesting topic and honestly, these videos never perform well, my more educational style videos, but I really love making them. I learned so much from them and I'm sure you all learned so much from them. So if you found any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, commented something down below, and maybe even shared this video with others to help spread this information. So we're not just gonna be talking about just biofuel. We're gonna be talking about biofuel versus petroleum. What exactly is biofuel? What are the different types of biofuel? And is it actually going to help us save the planet? Let's find out. Before we get too far into it, if you'd like to read along, you can follow along with the script linked down below, or you can just change the speed of this video using the gear icon right down here because I am known to talk a little bit fast. So I was inspired to make this video because I actually did a video about bioplastics. I'll leave it linked up here and down below. And in that video, it was kind of similar to this one in that we explored our bioplastics better than petroleum-based plastics. And it turns out that it's not always necessarily better. It really depends a lot on if people have access to industrial compost. So so I'm kind of hypothesizing that in this video, we're gonna find out that maybe biofuel actually isn't as great as we think it is, but who knows, maybe it actually is, just based on what I learned from the bioplastics video. I also thought this would be an interesting video to talk about because electric vehicles are becoming more popular as well as the use of biofuel is becoming more popular. So I thought with all of those in mind, maybe I should start educating people on this stuff. So if you'd like a video about electric vehicles, let me know down below and it would kind of fit right into this. So first thing we need to talk about is what is biofuel? There are two types, there's ethanol and biodiesel. Let's talk about ethanol first. So we actually had an ethanol plant in my hometown because I come from a big farming community in the Midwest, US from Ohio. And so I've always known from a young age because my family supported the ethanol plant with our farming is that ethanol is made from corn, at least in our area. Ethanol can be made from other plant matters. So ethanol is a plant-based alcohol that is then blended with gasoline in order to increase the octane and thus reduce the amount of carbon monoxide and other emissions. So the most common blend to use is E10, which is ethanol 10% gasoline 90% which is only 10% less gasoline being burned than normal but that's still better but some cars like my dad's old car actually runs off of e85 which this can be anywhere from 51 to 83 percent ethanol and then the remaining percentage gasoline this depends on the geography and season of the area so at this point in history actually about 97 percent of gasoline in the united states is sold with at least some ethanol in it it might just be one to ten percent but it could be all the way up to 83 percent ethanol is made from the plant starches and sugars from the non-edible fibers that make up the bulk of plant matter. So they use plant byproducts. And ethanol is made through the fermentation in which microorganisms metabolize the plant sugars. But I think it's really cool that you can make ethanol with plant byproducts instead of like harvesting a whole bunch of corn that could be fed to us or to cattle and isn't being turned into gas. I think it's really cool that they can still use the corn to say feed the cattle or make cereal and other things for us. And then all the stalks, the husks, all of that gets turned into ethanol. Next, let's talk about what biodiesel is. So biodiesel differs in a few ways. Biodiesel is made from new and used vegetable and animal oils and burns a lot cleaner than petroleum-based diesel. What it means by new and used vegetable oil is that it might be, say, pulling a bottle of vegetable oil off the shelf in a supermarket, that's new vegetable oil. But say they got vegetable oil from McDonald's after a day of being used to deep fry french fries, that's used used vegetable oil or animal oil. And I think this is really cool because cooking oil, you can't pour it down the drain, so it ends up in the landfill. So instead of putting it in the landfill, we're putting it into our cars. Of course, after a bunch of refining and stuff, don't just put grease right into your car. Don't do that. So because it is made from plants and animals, it is non-toxic and biodegradable, and it is created by combining alcohol with vegetable oil, animal fat, or recycled cooking grease. So biodiesel is like its petroleum-based cousin in that it actually goes into diesel engines. You can't put biodiesel into a um, un leaded engine. And similar to ethanol though, biodiesel can be combined with regular diesel at any sort of percentage. And this even includes up to 100% biodiesel, so that's pretty cool. Now, just for the sake of science and for the sake of understanding this video a little bit more, we're going to talk about how fuel even works. Like, how does putting fuel into my car make my car go? And honestly, I never really understood this all that well myself, so I think this will be helpful for a lot of people. Petroleum-based fuels contain different complex mixtures of hydrocarbons, which are burned to create energy, but hydrocarbons can also be created with biomass and it is nearly identical to petroleum-based fuels. So that's why some biofuels are compatible in our engines that might not have been necessarily created to take biofuels. So how is biofuel made? Again, I'm not going to touch too far on this just to, I don't want to bore people, but if you want to read the full article about how biofuel is made, I'll leave the article linked down below. Biofuel creation is a multi-step process. First, the plant cell wall must be broken down during deconstruction. Then the sugars, oils, and other parts 
parts must be upgraded in either biological processing or chemical processing. After upgrading, the finished product could be turned into fuels or bioproducts to sell and be used to stabilize the finished petroleum. So now that we've learned all of that, let's discuss, is biofuel better than petroleum-based fuel? So obviously not burning fossil fuels is better than burning a whole bunch of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources, meaning that once we use all of it, it's gone. I guess that at some point, you know, in the next million years, there will be more oil down there because that's all that oil is, is decomposed plant matter. That's millions of years to, to make oil. But fossil fuels actually make up 80% of the world's energy consumption. The other 20%, I guess, is renewables. So if we're using it at these incredible rates, eventually we're gonna run out. And this is a problem because fossil fuels have become very vital to modern life. Things like like electricity, air conditioning, heating, getting ourselves to work, our work itself, like sending an email requires fossil fuels, well, requires energy of some sort. And of course, another downside to fossil fuels, like we all know, they release a whole bunch of CO2 and other greenhouse gases, which is ultimately causing climate change. But as we've learned, biofuels release a lot less, if any, greenhouse gases. I'm just gonna call them GHGs. And of course, when anything is created, there are some GHGs in the process. For example, growing the corn, harvesting the corn, transporting the corn to the ethanol plant, that all releases GHGs because all of these equipment, all of this equipment is run off of fossil fuels. So if we can get that equipment to be run off of biofuels in order to make more biofuels, there'll be a whole lot less GHGs. <laughs> But that's just something to be cognizant about is not necessarily the end of life and something's physical environmental footprint, but also it's invisible environmental footprint, things that you don't see before it gets to you, the consumer. The good news too with biofuels is that they're renewable. In theory, its use could be sustained forever. The EPA predicts that biofuels could yield lower life cycle GHGs than regular gasoline. And just like bioplastics, the emissions can be reduced further if biofuels were made with plant waste and byproduct as opposed to virgin plant. Meaning that, you know, if we just continue to take the corn husks and the corn stalks and all of the you know restaurant grease to make biofuels that would be a much lower carbon footprint than using virgin plants and again if we can get all the machinery to be run off of renewables whether that be evs um, biofuels anything like that that will reduce the carbon footprint further as well another perk to biofuels is that they can be produced almost entirely domestically a lot of the fuel that we dig and use is not necessarily dug up and used in the u.s or in whatever country you live in it's almost certainly imported to you but for the sake of this video, we're gonna focus on the US. Like I already mentioned, in my hometown, my dad and the rest of our family, we grew corn and we took it to the ethanol plant five miles down the road. That's how local ethanol has the potential to be. And if, I mean, that ethanol was used in our city, it was probably used in the rest of the Midwest, maybe even the rest of the US. So this means significantly lower emissions when being transported because if we're getting oil from, I don't know, the Middle East, oil from Alaska, whatever, that requires so much more shipping than ethanol from literally right down the road. And like I already mentioned, it's important to remember that zero GHGs is nearly impossible for just about anything, even the creation of biofuels and other renewable energy, even solar and wind, there is gonna be some GHGs going into the process of making these things, not necessarily the burning and using of these things. That being said, the burning of biofuels themselves is less harmful than burning fossil fuels. In order to maximize the benefits of biofuels, we need to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. But here's one of the big downsides though. Like we saw with bioplastics, if we became an economy that only consumed bioplastics, it actually might be just as harmful, maybe even more harmful than sticking with its petroleum based counterpart. This is the same with biofuels. So if we're trying to change our entire energy grid to being biofuels, it might wreak havoc on the environment in different ways. This could lead to deforestation in order to plant more corn and soybeans to turn into fuel. And then the issue as well with growing monocrops, like we found out in my biodiversity series, is that biodiversity loss be just as harmful to the environment as burning a whole bunch of fossil fuels. So we need to lower our fossil fuel consumption, but also raise the level of biodiversity instead of destroying biodiversity and burning more fossil fuels. We can't have one or the other. We can't quit using fossil fuels, but continue to destroy biodiversity. Everything will still be out of whack. It's not gonna help climate change at all. And this is similar to what we already see with animal agriculture. We're already seeing so much land being converted to corn and soybean and wheat fields just to feed to our livestock. We could be turning all that land into food that we eat ourselves. And the same with bioplastics and the same with biofuels. While bioplastics and biofuels 
fuels are great, if we devote a whole bunch of land to making these products, what good is that gonna do? We're not gonna be able to feed ourselves and we're destroying biodiversity in the process. So overall, yes, biodiversity seems to be better than fossil fuels, but the same issue relies as always, overconsumption. And I made an entire video about overconsumption. I'll leave that linked up here as well as down below if you're interested in that. Basically what it comes down to is we use too much fuel, period. Whether that's petroleum-based fuel, whether that's bio-based fuel. Too much oil and we will run out and heat the planet in the process. Too much biofuel and we could see habitat and biodiversity loss, which certainly will not help the state of the planet. So I think biofuel is a great step, just like with bioplastics. I think switching to less petroleum is always better, but we need to use it responsibly. We need to quit over consuming. So things like driving less, getting a hybrid car, an EV entirely, taking public transportation, carpooling, turning the lights off in your house when you're not using them because that's using fossil fuels as well, and other things like that. And like I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to see a video about electric vehicles, what they are, are they truly better for the planet, EVs versus biofuels, let me know down below. I'd love to make a video, something along those lines. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I hope that you found this video helpful, maybe a little bit inspiring and educational because that's ultimately what I'm here to do. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining me. I make new content every Monday and Thursday, Japan Standard Time, which is Sunday and Wednesday in the US. Only for a little while longer. I only have a few months left in Japan. Let me know your thoughts on biofuels down below. I'm open to all sorts of discussions and comments because my thoughts are not conclusive. I'm just like with bioplastics, I'm kind of on the fence about this. So I'd love to see your stance on this subject. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. Are bioplastics better than plastic, plastic based plastic? Are bioplastics better than petroleum based bio? Next, let's talk about what? Did I say Lex? I, I don't really know where I'm going. Things like electricity, air conditioning. That would be such a much lower carbon footprint. <laughs> I'll drop the iPad. That being said, the burning of fire fuel, fire, fire fuels? Is that what I just said? Physical and literal. That's not the word, and I can't remember the word. No, I don't know where we're going yet. Maybe by the time this video goes live, I doubt it.